beer battered fish and chips. So after a couple of educational videos, I'm excited to hop back on recipe videos with this amazing vegan fish and chips. It's probably my favorite comfort food, and the good news is, it's not difficult to veganize. As long as you get it super thick and crispy on the outside, and super flavorful, you get pretty good vegan fish and chips. Now there's multiple ways to make it. Some people like to use banana blossom, and that's a trend, and I will make that version in the future. But this time, I'm keeping it classic and simple. I mean, vegan classic. I'm using tofu, and I'm gonna be making oven baked fries, chips, and some wasabi mushy peas. They're so easy, quick, and simple to make, and super tasty and healthy er and i'm making all of those in the most productive way possible let's get right in so here are the main ingredients it's gonna be a lot this time but you don't have to use all of them i've got extra firm tofu this is gonna be our vegan fish this time and i'm gonna use some korean seasoned roasted seaweed to give the tofu some sea flavor just like i did in my vegan spicy tuna roll video make sure to check that out if you love sushi now you can use a nori sheet instead if you would like but you'll have to cut it into smaller pieces with scissors so this thing makes it much easier and quicker. Now, russet potatoes are the best for chips or fries, but this time I'm using Yukon gold potatoes because I had so many of those. For the wasabi mushy peas, I have frozen green peas, a wasabi obviously, red onion, and some vegetable broth. For the batter, I have plain flour. If you have cornstarch or tapioca starch, that would be a plus. So the batter would be lighter and sort of fluffier. Some baking powder. So here's my secret ingredient, kombu dashi. This is optional. It's gonna add more of the sea flavor and umami. I have some turmeric to help the fish turn golden and a touch of smoked paprika for some extra layer of smoky flavor. These are optional so don't be overwhelmed. For the vegan tartar sauce, I have vegan mayo, pickled cucumber, capers, and a lemon, and some dill. And finally, a bottle of ale. I have an IPA. I love the super hoppy and deep flavor of it for the vegan fish. You certainly don't have to use it. If you don't want to use alcohol, you can use sparkling water instead. The bubbles are essential. All right, let's get cooking. I'm starting with the potatoes. First, preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Here I have washed potatoes. Cut them in any style you like. You can do wedges. I'm keeping the skin on because that's where the nutrients are. Next, grab the tofu and drain it. And squeeze all the water out by pressing it with something flat and heavy. Oh, please ignore my dirty pan. Let the gravity do the work. Now get a pot with adequate water in it. Lightly season the water. And I'm gonna bring it to a simmer. Dump all the potato pieces into the cold water. This is an optional process, but this is the British way of doing it. It makes the potatoes fluffy on the inside and super crispy on the outside. Now while the oven is preheating and the potatoes are being boiled and the tofu is being crushed, let's get done with the mushy peas, shall we? See how productive this is? I'm gonna dice half of the large red onion. And then I'm gonna use half of it for the mushy peas and the other half for the tartar sauce. And I'm gonna do the same with the lemon. Get another pot and heat it up. Extra virgin olive oil. And I'm gonna cook the diced onion until it's translucent. Then add the frozen peas and stir them around until they're fragrant. Add just enough vegetable broth to cover them. Bring it to a simmer and cook until the peas are cooked. Season with some salt if needed cause veggie broths are usually already salty and lots of black pepper. When the liquid is reduced enough, grab a hand mixer or just dump it into a blender and just blitz. Don't blitz too much because you still want the texture of the peas. Add a touch of the wasabi and squeeze a touch of the juice through your fingers. That's it. Super easy. Alright, let's taste it. Mm, the wasabi works so great with the peas. The wasabi mushy peas are done. Now the potatoes should be tender. I'm going to drain them. Place them on a baking sheet or a piece of tin foil on a baking tray. Keep in mind the potatoes should be tender, so be gentle. Make sure to place them on a single layer. Drizzle a good amount of olive oil. Sprinkle some salt. You can use some garlic powder and maybe smoked paprika if you want some more flavor, but I'm gonna keep them classic. Gently shake the tray, then bake them at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes. Next, I'm gonna move on to the batter. Get a large bowl. Into the bowl, add two cups of plain flour or one cup of it. 
in one cup of cornstarch or tapioca starch and one to two teaspoons of baking powder. Now the secret ingredients. Two teaspoons of kombu dashi for more of the sea flavor in umami. Half a tablespoon of turmeric. This is gonna help turn the fish golden. And half a teaspoon of smoked paprika for an extra layer of smoky flavor. And finally, open the bottle of IPA and pour it into the flour mix. This is so satisfying. The ale not only adds rich flavor, but also the bubbles react with the baking powder and really make the batter super light and crispy. Again, if you don't wanna use alcohol, you can just replace it with sparkling water for the bubbles and mix. It should be thick like pancake mixture. Mine was watery, so I thickened it up with some more flour. There you have the batter. I'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes. Now, let's check on the chips. The potatoes should be golden on the bottom. These are so crispy. Flip them over. You can drizzle more oil, which I should have. Put them back into the oven and bake for 15 more minutes. And in the meantime, finally, I'm gonna prepare our vegan fish. The tofu should be fairly dry by now. I decided to use two chunks of tofu. And I'm gonna cut the tofu this way. It depends on your tofu but try to get the longest piece as possible for the look. So I've got three of those fish fillet shaped pieces and two of those fish stick shaped pieces. And um, I don't think I'm using this thin. Okay, it's my dinner. And I'm gonna squeeze some juice onto the tofu. This is not only gonna make it easier for the seaweed to stick to the tofu, but also give the illusion that you're eating real fish. Grab the roasted seaweed and I'm gonna stick it to the largest side of each tofu piece. If it needs to overlap, just drop some of the batter, make it stick. The seaweed really adds the sea flavor because this is actual seafood. Yes, real vegan seafood exists. Next, I'm making the vegan tartar sauce. This is so easy and you won't believe it's vegan. First, finely chop some capers, a pickled cucumber, and some parsley. Get some vegan mayo and add them to it along with the reserved diced red onion and the chopped parsley and a touch of lemon juice. Mix thoroughly. Finally, top with some hand chopped dill. There we have the vegan tartar sauce. So simple. Now, it's time for the most exciting part. Let's deep fry our vegan fish. Get a pot. Fill the pot with oil halfway. I'm using a mix of extra virgin olive oil and grapeseed oil. Make sure the oil you use has a high smoke point so it doesn't turn into something bad. Get it on medium heat. To see if the oil is hot, just drop a touch of the batter into it. And if it floats, it's ready. Roll up your sleeves. Now grab the tofu pieces and carefully dip them into the batter. And slowly drop them into the oil, away from you. Make sure you fry the tofu pieces in batches. When the bottom is golden, flip them over. And I like to drop some of the extra batter on top to make a thick, crispy layer of batter. Deep fry until golden or golden brown depending on your preference. I like to keep it golden. When they're done, get them out with something like a spider. Don't use your fingers, right? Guys, look at that gorgeous skin. And immediately sprinkle some salt to make it even crispier. I'm using rock salt to bring out some rich umami. Oh, come on. This is the fusion of flavors of the ocean and the mountain. And of course, chili flakes for some heat. And finally, a touch of lemon juice on top. Gordon Ramsay, if you're watching this, this has to be on your veganuary menu next year. Get the chips out. Sprinkle some salt on these guys too. Now, everything is ready. It's time to serve. There you have the incredibly crispy and tasty IPA battered vegan fish and chips served with wasabi mushy peas and vegan tartar sauce. A perfect weekend treat.